Right, so we're back at the job. Uh, we've called it the cemetery job because it's in an old cemetery. Um, as I said before, it's a uh, conservation area, so we've had to keep under the, the under the 10 square metres. So it's, it's just under three point... It's under three... So we've had to keep... OK, so we're back on the cemetery job. We call it the cemetery job because it's an old cemetery. Um, it's conservation area as well, so we're having to keep under the 10 square metres, so it's three by three. Um, it's going to have composite cladding and it's going to have a log burner, which we know nothing about. So the customer has got uh, HATAS engineering and he's spoke to HATAS about it. They've changed the rules. Um, this guy who's come out is really informative. He knows his stuff, so they've changed it. This is a system that's got to go in one of these garden rooms. This is the kit, basically. There's loads of bits and pieces to it. So what we're going to try and do today, we're going to get it up through the roof, basically. This is going to go through the roof. It's got another double insulator that goes on there. That's the cowl that will sit on top of it. That's the flashing kit that we are going to put on the roof. That chimney's going to come through there. We're going to cut that to suit. We're going to cut this back and then our rubber will be bonded over there. It's something we haven't done before, but I'll show you inside what's involved with it as well. Um, <coughs> So this is the, so that's a, a that's the flu, and then this is the double liner for it. So basically what we've done, I've cut that, and I've cut that to the same depth as the roof joist and the 18mm OSB3. So I've got 120, 18, it's 138 mil, which is that. So that will sit in there. The flu will sit through the centre of there. Obviously it'll be flush with the bomb because it's going to go up past the OSB as well. I've created... I found the centre there, I've put a drill bit in, I'll show you what I'm going to do now because up there what I want to do is then cut this circle out so that my flue liner can go through there as well and I'll show you how I've done that. This is where we've worked out where the stove's going. It's a, little, it's a really tiny little stove that's designed for like gypsy caravans, um, what's what, um, Ertz and, are they Ertz, Yurts? What are they called? Yurts and stuff like that. So that there is the size of the log burner that's the center of the flue it has to be 200 off any wall so we've got 240 there which will allow for our fire line plasterboard plus the backing i think he's having slate or a sandstone backing so that's going to sit there and flow out of there um if adam comes around i'll show you around the back. this is jenny jenny's a new starter right adam so as you know from all my videos you know i've got no um what's the word i'm looking for adam? No affiliation with any company whatsoever. So, as you know, <laughs> Scott at Tool Station is <laughs> a great bloke, absolutely fantastic bloke. He works at Tool Station, he works at Leeds and Roundy Road, and if you want to buy out, he's the man, and he's very informative, and he knows his stock, he's ace. Right, so up here, then we have got... Adam can come round here. Can you come round here, Adam? Come round. Right. If Adam looks down, he'll show you the wall he's walking on. That's why the camera might be a bit wobbly and he's a bit tentative. So because we're getting old, Jenny, who's young, has made us a little ladder so we can climb up onto the roof. Right, so basically what I've done, I've... Uh, get that out of there. I've drilled up through the hole at the bottom. Can you see that all right, yeah? Yeah. I've drilled up through the hole at the bottom. So, and then I've made this, which is the same circumference Right, so I've cut the circle out now. The reason why I've used a uh, multi-tool is simply because I haven't got a jigsaw with me. So hopefully now that should be the right size for that flue liner to fit up there. Adam, yeah. where are you? Yeah. Will you just offer that flue liner up for me, please? Hopefully that'll pop up into there now. But it's not quite, just wants a little bit more out. Um, but you can see what's going to happen. So that basically is going to come up and be flush with there, which will then protect uh, the, the roof and the structure from any heat that radiates from this pipe. Right, right so that's that's the flashing kit fit. Um, well, it's not fit yet, but it's, it's a bit of a dry run. So I've, I've cut that ring out of that square you can see on the floor down there. Um, so what will happen now, I will put the sealant under there on that ring and fix that down and then the rubber will go over that and up up that bond to that and then there's like a collar that goes around there as well 
um, and that's as far as I can tell it's correct from what the hair test guy has told me what to do and give me some instruction to follow. Right, so what I've done now, I've, I've obviously put this flashing kit down, I've drawn around it, I'm now going to put some of this sealant on it uh, that the, the fire guy, the the task engineer has given me. Um, and then I'm, what I'm going to do then, I'm going to see which is the best option, but I'm going to either nail it down with these flathead galvanised pan nails or these plastic ball nails, both have got really flat head. Uh, I'll see how we go, so I can nail that down and then we'll put our rubber over, this will be nice and flat at the top, the rubber will go over, finish on there and then Chris will come and bond it to that. So I've put a continuous bead of sealant around there. What I'll do now is just drop that flashing kit down like that. Um, off it into place. Squeeze it down. And there. So what I'll do now, because obviously I want that as flat as possible, I'm going to nail it around. That's it. Um, I don't know which are the best, so I bought two. Um, both got a really look at look. Both got a really flat head on them, so I mean the plasterboard fixings they're probably looking best. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna nail it all around with them and then that will be in place and then I can take the flu back out and know that that's in the correct position. Right, so you can see I've nailed the flashing down all the way around now. Complete ring of nails. What I've been aiming for there is to get this as flat and as smooth as I possibly can so that the rubber will just go up there and then bond on there, which it is. It's lovely and flat and smooth now. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to drop that chimney down and then I'm going to pop that into the roof and then put some visqueen over tomorrow until we can get back on it tomorrow. Right, Liam, it's there looking middle at base. Um, but to be fair, They've got the water turned off here at the stopcock, so I'm wondering is it running across to this here? So John, John's came to this job today to set out. It's six meter by four meter. He started digging his holes and being the kind of guy he is, he's gone straight through the water pipe, which obviously we didn't know was there. Liam, what, whoa, what, 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 who's this guy? What, what, what am I doing in the middle of your vlog on your garden rooms? Well. For those who don't know, I'm one of Liam's um, mates. I grew up with Liam, and as a kid, we literally, we, we, well, we just lived on the street. We didn't live on the street, but we literally lived on the street. We were out, you know, crack of dawn, and came in, you know, crack of sunset. Um, we were on BMXs all the time, just either doing that, playing football in the street, playing Kirby. Um, you know, you name it, you know, we, we did it along with some things that we shouldn't have done. So one of them was, we used to go swimming in people's edges. <laughs> That's what we used to do. That were like the crime of the century where we lived, you know. Um, but it, we just, we had a right, right good laugh growing up. Um, would, I tell you what we did as well. We used to get real bad snow in the 80s and um, what we would do is we lived on top of a hill. So we would help people get up the hill, push the vehicles up the hill, and then when they got to the top of the hill, they'd go, right, lads, thanks a lot, you know, and they give us like a thumbs up and stuff like that, and we'd go, yeah, cheers. We would then duck and hold on to bumpers, and then we'd get pulled along the streets. That's what we'd do. Um, going past his parents, waving at them, you know, one-handed and what have you, and, but I mean, that was the highlight, you know, when, when winter came for us. Um, it was just, we just had a right good time, so what am I doing in middle of Liam's video? Well, one of his workers, unfortunately, has caught a water pipe in garden, and I'm on my way to go and literally bail him out. That's what I'm going to do. He's, he's a good mate. I'm not. You don't knock people when they're down. He's got a problem, and, and I'm going to go and help him, and I'm going to I'm going to sort it out and give him some moral support because it is five o'clock on a on a Tuesday night, and currently the customers' water's off. But that's it. So that's me appearing in the middle of uh, Liam's vlog. And uh, I hope you enjoyed a little bit of history about me and Liam growing up and what we used to get up to. Take it easy, everyone. And uh, 
Liam, your garden rooms are brilliant, and for all those on your self-built page as well, I've seen so much stuff that's been built and what have you, and having a go, and I've had a go myself. Um, it's brilliant, Liam. You've inspired loads and loads of people to uh, to do stuff, and uh, I think it's great, mate. And I do. I really, really wish you success and um, health and what have you. So take it easy. All right, and I'll see you also. Um, it's some kind of plastic pipe. It's out of our pay realm, isn't it? So we've had to get the fresh ones in, haven't we, Paul? Daily plumbing and eating. Check tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so what we've done, we found the stop tap, we turned it off, and Paul's going to now try and repair this pipe for us. Um, and that's it. Like a sleeve. Yeah. Yeah. Where are we off from? Tool station. What's this thing? So this is a Filmac UTC. UTC stands for Universal Transitional Coupler. Um, they come in various sizes. The size that we tend to keep is from 15 mil up to about 40 odd mil. This particular one does 27 to 34 mil. So if, if this is not Imperial 32 mil MDPE and it's some old Alcathene, this will fit. And impossible to get hold of at this time of night. <laughs> That's why we keep them in stock. <laughs> right, we've got that sleeve. Where's that sleeve? Oh, we're in, Liam. Is that the same black pipe, Paul, that you told me that when it was in the house? It's right, brittle. Yeah. It's a different one. But this, Liam, might be that it's. Um, I'm just going to nip a little bit of this off now. I think this is MDPE, Liam. This. Uh, what I want to do is, have you got? Left you've got a screwdriver or something like that. Oh, oh, just some, I just want something just to stick in as a mark, so that when I slide this in. You've got a pencil, do you? Pencil. Yeah, is that all right to go in floor? Yeah, so I know where I am here. Yeah. Has that got no stop in the middle like that other one then? Um, no, it'll go all the way through this. Yeah. Just slacken that bit off. But it'll allow me to do this, you see. Tricks at trade here, Griffin. Yeah. Pencil. Technical. <laughs> Technical department. Got the head man as well. We've now got Matty, won't we? Yeah. Matty's the head man. <laughs> did they just got a hand tight or do you have to get grips on them? I've brought my grips, Liam. You haven't got hand strength like you used to have, have you? No, you know. Alright, strength's gone on it, Paul. Yeah, I lost it all. <laughs> but um, I'm going to give it a little tweak. If you over tighten it, it'll just crush the pipe, albeit we have put a strengthener in. Next door's is off as well. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, just to add to, add to pressure? Yeah. Right. You happy? Yeah, I'm happy. Pencil? Oh, I'll leave that there while we turn water on in case it blows off and, and we know how much weight it's moved and all that business. Right. Not that I'm expecting it to blow off. Um, right, so there you go. It's open valve full and we have got a fixed pipe. No leak. We're good. You can take that pencil out now, Griffin. So this is my old mate Paul Daly, we grew up together with Paul. We did. Daly Plumber and Eating, you'll not get a better plumber anywhere in this country. Mr. Captain Backflow, is it? Yeah. It is, there you go. If you want some, it doesn't do domestic anymore though, it's, it's below his pay grade, it's only big stuff. <laughs> if your pipe's not less than, if it's less than 32 million, you're interested in that girth. He likes a big old girth, don't you Paul? <laughs> 
Right, so if you're watching this, right, <laughs> this is the kind of man you get if you build garden rooms. This is the best you can achieve if you're a plumber <laughs> and this is what you drive around in. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> Private plate, all kitted out. Open up, Paul. What he does on his spare time, we don't know. <laughs> There you go. So, like I said, best plumber in country, without a shadow of a doubt, Captain Backflow, Paul Daly, Daily Plumbing and Eating, saved the day again out of hours. How much, Paul? How much? How much? We'll, we'll just call it a thousand, Liam. No problem, no problem. Cheers, <laughs>